What is up, everybody? I am Kevin Ioli. That, of course, is Paige Van Zandt. You know her from UFC. You know her from bare knuckle boxing. You know her from regular boxing. And, of course, now I think you know her from Power Slap. Paige, welcome. You're doing it again, huh? I'm doing it again. Yeah, thanks for having me. I wasn't sure uh, after that last one if that was a one and done, but is this something that you look uh, forward to your October 24th uh, Power Slap 9? Are you going to be a regular competitor in this? Who knows? Honestly, they offered me another opportunity to compete. I couldn't say no. I had such an incredible time the first time. And going into the first one, I truly wasn't sure like what I would think of it. It was a new experience. If I would love it, if I would hate it, if I'd want to do it again. Um, absolutely love the experience. So when they called me to have me back, I absolutely couldn't say no. It was kind of amazing. Power Slap 8, you fought Christine Willemarant. She won a decision 30 to 25 on all cards. Christine had fought Sheena Bathory, who is a big, strong, physical woman in her previous fight, and then fighting you, uh, who had fought as low as 115 pounds in MMA. I, I almost wondered if it was a size mismatch. When that fight was made, did you have any concerns like, hey, you know, she's fighting these big girls and now fighting me? No, I knew she would be bigger than me, um, but... I feel like I'm going into this with a little bit different mindset. It's okay if my comp if my competitors have a little bit of size advantage on me because I'm not cutting any weight. I'm going to go into it 100% hydrated. My brain is going to be fully hydrated. Um, I just think it's smart to give yourself that hydration advantage. The weight cut is what really ultimately takes like the hydration and the water out of your brain, which causes you to get knocked out, which causes you right. to get dazed. And I just, I want to take that element out of it. And uh, I think going into that one, it really was a feeling out process. I think I, I didn't, wasn't, I wasn't sure how much bigger she would be. I knew it would be a little bit, but I felt comfortable and confident going into it. How much went, when the opportunity came up, did you have to think about it? Because, you know, a lot of people who don't know Power Slap and they go, you're undefended hits to the face. Like, what is this? And they think it's crazy. I thought that when I first heard about it, right? Um, what, what was your take and how did you evolve where you felt it was safe enough to do? Uh, yeah, for me, Power Slap is, it's absolutely insane. Uh, but when you really break down like the training for Power Slap in comparison to the training for a boxing match for an MMA fight, I don't take a single hit to the face. The entire training camp, if you want to call it, I don't get hit in the head at all. So it takes that element completely out of it. So I do feel the longevity of the sport, even though you are seeing these incredible knockouts, which you do see in MMA and you do see in boxing and bare knuckle boxing. But the, the daily impact that we're taking is significantly lower so I knew going into it, all right, yes, this is crazy. Standing there and just letting somebody hit you is absolutely nuts. But going into it, my body is super healthy. Uh, I'm not getting that daily grind and impact that all these other combat sports get. And uh, yeah, I think truly going into the first one, I was like, all right, let's just see how this goes. And then now that I'm going into the second one, I'm like, okay, yeah, that was awesome. Let's just do it again. So you're fighting Chelsea Dotson at uh, uh, Power Slap 9. For people who follow MMA closely, of course, that's the wife of uh, John the Magician Dotson. So kind of always has some ties that, that bind there. Um, tell me this. Let's rank them one to four. Uh, boxing, bare knuckle boxing, MMA, and Power Slap. Like when you get here, which one hurts the most and which one hurts the least? Let's let's talk <laughs> clean hits to, to the head, right? Uh, bare knuckle boxing by far is, is the highest. I feel like in bare knuckle boxing, every punch you feel and every punch causes some element of like, um, nervousness. Like, did that cut me open? Is that sweat on my face? Is it blood where you're just a little bit uneasy getting hit with a bare knuckle, um, you know, a bare knuckle fist, but, um, I don't know. I feel like they're all the same when, when you're in the moment, you don't necessarily feel pain. You just kind of feel like if the hit was good or not. You can feel if you're dazed or not. You can feel if like, ooh, that I shouldn't take a punch like that again or I shouldn't take a slap like that again. So I, I can't really say pain for pain because you really don't feel the pain until the match is over. Right, yeah, of course. 
I remember I was there back when you weren't even allowed to fight on the Ultimate Fighter uh, because you were too yeah. too young. And you've kind of, you know, you were such a uh, a big star in those early days in the UFC. And you've kind of transitioned. I think you become a business person, right? And, you know, you're, you're doing a lot of different things. Everybody knows, of course, your great performance on Dancing with the Stars. But let me ask you this about your OnlyFans. You know, you have a very successful very OnlyFans page. But I wonder how much... Um, going into power slap brought you to a new audience. And did that help you in terms of, you know, exposing yourself uh, to a group of people who maybe weren't familiar with you before? And did you see a difference on your, on your OnlyFans business after the power slap show? Uh, truly, I, I haven't really paid attention to those sorts of like <laughs> um, analytics. But for me going into power slap, I knew there was going to be a large demographic who already knew who I was and in a brand new audience. I, I believe that power slap is doing extremely well at bringing um, the younger generation, the generation that's on uh, TikTok, Instagram, really the era of social media. There is this entire new group of, of fans that are coming to combat sports. And I know that there is, um, you know, the true journeyman might not love it, but you see all these like YouTubers and TikTokers competing in, in combat sports. But in the end of the day, they're bringing a huge audience with them and they're bringing more fans over to the sport, which is absolutely incredible. Um, so yeah, I did, I did get, you know, a new, some new following, maybe some people who didn't know who I was yet. And I think that'll continue to happen as power slap grows. And just what, what about your social numbers, right? Because, you know, Dana always, you know, every time I talk to Dana White about the power slap, he's going on about the numbers, right? And how big it is, right? What did you see in terms of growth on social media? Let's forget the OnlyFans for a second, but just your social media channels. Like once you agreed to do this, what was that like? Um, for me, it was, it was basically very, pretty similar to anything, like whether I take a boxing match or an MMA fight. Um, I think just having something notable going on in my life, I know brings a bump in following, brings a bump in, in the analytics of, of new eyes, new integrations. Um, so I don't know if I necessarily have like the analytics to compare it to past experiences, like past MMA fights or boxing matches. But it definitely is a bump anytime you're doing something as notable as this with this many eyes. And it does help that the UFC machine is behind it and helping it grow. Um, they're doing incredible things. And you definitely can't deny how incredible their poll is on social media. And um, I think they I think Dana had said, um, you know, Shana, her video of her, you know, getting slapped and then blowing a kiss got more views than I think any of taylor swift's tiktoks ever so i was like that's pretty incredible i i wrote that story that was uh, i talked to frank uh um Lemicello, the president of power slap and he told me that right because what had happened Paige, at that point dana was calling me going oh my god all these power slap videos are going crazy 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 talk to frank so he can explain it to you so when i called Frank, mm -hmm. and he's trying to explain to me how well the, the power slap uh, was doing. He used Taylor Swift because that was when the Kansas City Chiefs were playing those yes. games and she was on TV all the time. And I looked it up and I was like, oh, my God, it's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it was it's huge. Yeah, I think the amazing thing about power slap is there is this newer generation or just as technology continues to grow, people's attention span is going getting shorter and shorter. Right. The, they want to see their short videos that are going to really get your adrenaline up, adrenaline up. And that's what power slip does. You can watch an entire match in a very short period of time. And you're going to get that adrenaline rush and the thrill of watching somebody get hit. And it's like this quick, quick form content. There is two, two different things, you know, competing is one thing and, and watching and being like, did you enjoy watching the fights? Like, you know, I, I saw you put some videos out before, you know, imitating power slap and everything. But did you watch the power slaps before you got there? And, you know, what was your take if you did? I watched, of course, I've seen the ones on social media. I had followed power slap and I had been watching the cards. But really, there's nothing like going to one live. And when I showed up for, for my event, I made sure I went out and watched the few matches before mine just to, like, get an element of familiarity to know, okay, this is what I do after I get hit. And, and there's, it's one thing to like be talked through what, like what you do, but it's, it's great to be able to see it. So I was like, oh, wow, this is crazy watching people just stand there and get hit. And then you, you know, go back into your, you know, with your coach. And it was just really incredible. The difference of watching it on TV versus watching it live. It is not like going to a fight at all. It is like going to an event or a concert. Like 
I would say the atmosphere is just completely different. In between matches, people are drinking and eating and partying, and then all of a sudden, everything goes silent, and you watch these people get hit. I, I noticed you didn't really engage with the crowd too much during the fight, but one of the things I've liked about going to the events is, you know, seeing the fighters like yelling at the crowd and people who have bet against you or whatever, yelling at you, right? Uh, do you feel now you're more comfortable where you might see a little bit of that side of page come out? I, you know what? I, I feel like in the moment, I'm so fixated on the task in front of me. So, um, of course, after my match was over, I tried to find my husband in the crowd and I could see him like screaming and going nuts. So I do pay attention to that aspect. But really, when I'm about to compete, the only thing I pay attention to is doing what I need to do to win. So let's wrap it up with this. You know, the one, I guess, criticism, if that's what you can call it, that you, you got for that last one was, you know, you're close to fouls, maybe were you flinching or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. How much in terms of... Uh, practicing have you done in between and do you feel like uh you're going to be better in that regard so you don't put yourself in the position to potentially get a foul and lose a point yeah so on the last lap i fouled by flinching of course i mean it's easier said than done to try not to flinch of course you want to stand there and take it take it but i think you're going to see as more professional fighters go into power slap the flinching is going to be an issue because our bodies natural mechanics it's ingrained in our memory to flinch whether you want to or not so there is a few things that i'm adjusting to like the training before i was like all right i want to see the slap coming and meeting my face so my body knows to be protected and it knows to brace for impact whereas this time i'm like all right i need to close my eyes a little bit sooner i need to make a few adjustments so my body doesn't react in a way that's going to cause me to foul you can try all you want to just stand there and get hit. It's it's very hard for your body and your brain to like coincide. Yeah. So um, of course I've done I've done things here and there, but you can really almost you can really do so much to practice getting slapped. So last thing, just uh, you have done so many different things in your career uh, athletically. Are we done? Is there any is there anything that you haven't done that you got up your sleeve that that you're planning to like, give a shot at? Who knows? Honestly, I, I didn't know I would do power slap. I got a call from my manager saying, hey, would you ever do power slap? I was like, well, yeah, I guess so. Um, who knows? We'll see what they call me with next. And uh, I'm pretty much just going to say yes to anything that I find exciting um, and a good business opportunity. So. Yeah, I didn't mention wrestling earlier when I was talking about those. But of course, you're a professional wrestler, too. So apparently, yes. <laughs> Got a little bit of everything. Paige Van Zandt, good luck in uh, Abu Dhabi on uh, Power Slap 9. Appreciate you joining us. Yep, thank you.